Hello everybody! My name is Rachel and welcome to the third 2017 Booktube SFF Babbles topic. If you need to know more about the Booktube SFF awards and the Babbel topics, I will link the Goodreads group and the Tumblr page down below. This week's topic is underrated science fiction and fantasy, which is actually one of my favorite things to talk about. I'm not really sure what counts as underrated, but in this case I have picked eight books that either don't have many reviews on Goodreads or I just haven't heard many people talking about them on booktube. The first book is Gene Mapper by Taiyo Fuji. This is a Japanese science fiction novel translated by Jim Hubbard. I read this recently and it just scratched that hard science fiction itch so well. It has a lot of info dumpy sections but not like really stilted. Lots of good science about genetics and virtual reality, which I really enjoyed, but the plot is pretty simple. Our main character is a gene mapper who discovers that the rice plants he modified for a major corporation project have gone awry. They've been contaminated by outside genetic material and he goes off on this quest to find out how and why this could have happened and he ends up traveling kind of around Asia and meeting a whole host of interesting people, male and female. The next book is Powers by Ursula Le Guin. This is one of her fantasy novels and it's actually the third in a series, though I think you can completely read it as a standalone if you want to. I have an overview of the entire series where I talk about this book in more depth as well, so I will link that if you want to know way more about it. I suppose it's a little weird to say that anything by Le Guin is underrated, but I really don't hear many people talking about this series or this book in particular, even though it was a Nebula Award winner. Powers is about a young boy named Gav who has been a slave all of his life. He can sometimes remember things that are going to happen in the future, but he keeps this gift secret. And for the most part, he can kind of forget that he's a slave at the beginning of the story. He leads a very comfortable and safe life. He is being educated and groomed to be a teacher on his owner's estate. And then a terrible event happens that results in the death of his sister, and he comes face to face with the injustice, the inequality of slavery, his grief, and then his desire to flee and find his own freedom. And it's a very powerful read. Next is Europe and Autumn by Dave Hutchinson, the first book on the Fractured Europe sequence, which has been getting quite a bit of buzz here recently. This book focuses on Rudy, a cook at a Polish restaurant who gets sucked into becoming a courier, which is equal parts spy and smuggler in a fractured Europe that's devolved into thousands of tiny nations and polities. And as he's learning the ropes to becoming a courier, as he's getting better at this, he discovers a severed head in a storage locker and then everything gets crazy and dangerous and there may be another different reality involved. If this sounds like a lot of fun, it really is. I'm going to read you the first sentence of this actually because it really grabbed my attention and it, just the tone of it is what the book is like. The Hungarians came into the restaurant around 9 in the evening. Eight large men with gorgeously tailored suits and hand-stitched Italian shoes and hundreds lotty haircuts. Basically, it's never a good sign when eight very large, very drunk Hungarians show up at your restaurant and trash it one evening, and that's where Rudy works. China Mountain Zhang by Maureen F. McHugh is still one of the few five-star books I have read in 2017. I think everybody should read this book. It is a more quiet science fiction novel, really focused on characters. It's set in a post-socialist revolution America and a world dominated by China and the interlocking lives of the small people, the, the everyday people who are trying to survive in the cracks of the system. The central story focuses on Zhang Zhongshan, a half-Chinese gay man living in America who is at first kind of a slacker. He's just getting by as a construction engineer and then he ends up going to university in China and becoming an architect. And it also shows you some of the lives of the people who he crosses paths with. This novel explores race and identity and sexuality and just the lives of the ordinary everyday people who are not trying to over throw or rebel against the system, but are trying to live within it and use it to their advantage. 
This is a science fiction novel that may not initially seem very science fiction-y because of the way that technology is treated as so ordinary and not explained so much because the characters find things like living on Mars to be so ordinary, they just take it for granted. It's not really explained, but it is a very well-developed world, even if it is understated. Another unusual science fiction novel is Dream Snake by Vonda McIntyre. This is about a healer named Snake who uses uh, snake venom as medicine in a post-apocalyptic future, and after her rare alien dream snake is killed by the ignorant people she's trying to help, she has to go on a quest to find more dream snakes so she can regain her healing powers. What I will always think about this book and why I think it is so important why people should read it is that it really shows this woman's kindness and compassion towards other people, which I think is rare, period, but also so refreshing in a setting like this, which is very post-Armageddon in, in its feel. Like, people don't trust each other entirely, but also there's some human innate goodness in there as well. Next is Remnant Population by Elizabeth Moon, which is a really wonderful standalone science fiction novel. It's about an old woman named Ophelia who lives on a colony planet with her family, and she fully expects to live here the rest of her life and die here. But the corporation that runs and owns the colony has to disband it, and they're going to move all the people to a different planet. Ophelia doesn't want to go, and she knows it's very likely she'll die in cryosleep, so she decides to stay behind, which she manages, but then when all the humans have left, she discovers she is not as alone as she thought she was. I thought this was a really heartwarming story about an older character, because Ophelia is in her 70s, who finally gets the freedom she deserves and the respect that she deserves, even if that's in an unusual way and from an unusual source. The penultimate book on my list is Pat Murphy's The Falling Woman. This is a contemporary fantasy novel that was published in the 1980s, which is about an archaeologist named Elizabeth who can see the people from the past. This is both a blessing and a curse because it helps her with archaeological discoveries, but it means people think she's kind of crazy, and it also means her relationships with other people, including her daughter, are rather strained. Then, at a site in the Yucatan, Elizabeth encounters the shadow of a Mayan priestess who wants her and her daughter to participate in a ritual to bring back a goddess, which may or may not be a good idea. This was a fantastic read about sacrifice and a mother-daughter relationship with very lifelike characters. The last book on my list is The Winged Histories by Sofia Samatar. This is a companion novel to A Stranger in Alondria, which is still one of my favorite fantasy novels of all time. It was so good. I don't think that The Winged Histories was as amazing, as wonderful as A Stranger in Alondria. It wasn't as immersive, but it is still a beautiful read, so well written. And I'm kind of sad that there was all this buzz about it before it came out, and then when it did come out in 2016, I just didn't hear much about it afterwards, so I think it deserves a mention here just because it's Sophia Samatar, and she is such a good writer. The book is not a straightforward narrative of just one person, like A Stranger in Alondria is. It's actually the four stories of these women, a soldier, a poet, a scholar, and a princess, I think, during this time of rebellion and revolution. They have different ideologies, they're on different sides of the conflict, and I think it's actually a very nuanced book. It has a lot of depth to it that makes it more rewarding upon a second read. I certainly think I didn't get everything out of it the first time, but it was still really good. Those are my eight recommendations for underrated science fiction and fantasy. I really do like talking about this topic. If you have any recommendations of your own, or if you have done this Babbles topic, please leave your comment down below and tell me. Thank you very much for watching, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.